Ancient Egypt's history is like a puzzle with guesses about events, ruler deaths, and how people lived. Egypt is still a mystery, but digging up tombs has given us some answers. It's like solving a few pieces of the puzzle, but there's still a whole lot we still need to learn. When you think of Egypt, you might picture mummies emerging from dark pyramids, thanks to Hollywood. But Egypt has some filthy and hidden stories beyond its mysterious reputation. Stick around until the end to discover intriguing facts that will surely take you back in time. In the tapestry of ancient civilizations, the Egyptians stand out for their pyramids and pharaohs and their flair for makeup. Surprisingly, both men and women indulged in the art of cosmetics, weaving a colorful thread into the fabric of their daily lives. For the Egyptians, makeup wasn't just about looking good. It was a sacred shield blessed by the gods Horus and Ra. They concocted their cosmetics by grinding ores like malachite and galena into a magical coal. This transformative potion was skillfully applied around the eyes with wood, bone, and ivory tools. Women, in particular, embraced a palette of colors, staining their cheeks with vibrant red paint and adorning their hands and fingernails with the rich hues of henna. Blended from oil, mirror, and cinnamon, perfumes completed the olfactory symphony that accompanied their daily routines. In their wisdom, the Egyptians believed their makeup possessed mystical healing powers. Strangely enough, Modern research has validated a part of their belief. The lead-based cosmetics worn along the Nile surprisingly effectively ward off eye infections. In the time-stained pages of ancient history, the vibrancy of ancient Egypt often overshadows the shadows that lingered, particularly for women. While held for its progressive achievements, the veil of harassment cast a sad note on the societal harmony of this civilization. Amid the remarkable strides in academic, economic, and political quality between men and women, the social fabric remained tarnished. Women would lead independent lives, pursue diverse professions, engage in contracts, marry, divorce, and own property. Yet, societal perceptions lagged, fostering an environment where women were not shielded from ridicule. Beyond social biases, harassment manifested in disturbing ways. Instances of catcalling, whistling, and indecent exposure were not just common, but were scarcely penalized. Historical accounts like those penned by Herodotus reveal the unsettling reality of men flashing their privates at women during sacred festivals along the River Nile. The ancient Egyptians, known for their wisdom, also grappled with the paradox of propagating the inferiority of women in their texts while acknowledging their societal contributions. The social and religious frameworks perpetuated restrictions and often vilified women with liberal attitudes. However, the most perplexing aspect distinguishing ancient Egypt from contemporary challenges faced by women was the prevalence of love potions. Rooted in the fascination with magic, these concoctions aim to manipulate emotions, from winning over uninterested hearts to ruining marriages out of sheer envy. The recipes for these potions were as bizarre as their intentions. Ingredients ranged from dandruff of deceased men to apple pits, tick-bitten dog blood, and even the client's semen. The efficacy of such potions remains highly questionable, but the mere existence of such practices underscores the complexities that women navigated in ancient Egypt. In the realm of ancient Egypt, where medical practices blended with curious beliefs, the origins of pregnancy tests took a fascinating and somewhat unconventional path. While we previously explored the signs of pregnancy in ancient Egypt, the journey to discovering these signs were nothing short of intriguing. Egyptians, known for their advanced medical system, dedicated to pregnancy and childbirth, had women working alongside men as physicians. However, their beliefs sometimes took a puzzling turn. Picture this. Instead of the modern pocket-sized pregnancy strips we use today, ancient Egyptian women carried two pouches of seeds, one with barley seeds and the other with wheat seeds. The belief was that if the grains in either bag sprouted after being urinated on, it signaled a divine message of pregnancy. Surprisingly, this seemingly ritualistic approach had some scientific merit. A study in 1963 by the National Institute of Health confirmed the effectiveness of the ancient Egyptian method proving that it worked 70% of the time. Margaret Crane was pivotal in modernizing pregnancy tests in 1969, introducing self-tests based on proteins detecting the hormone HCG. These proteins also elevated estrogen levels, potentially 
promoting seed growth, linking to the ancient method. The intrigue deepens when we explore the gender reveal aspect of the ancient Egyptian pregnancy test. They believe that if barley sprouted first, it indicated a boy, while wheat winning the race suggested a baby girl. Despite the lack of scientific backing, this adds a quirky twist to their historical practices. Beyond seeds, ancient Egyptians had a repertoire of unusual methods. One involved a mash of beer and dates, determining pregnancy by measuring the amount a woman vomited. Another method, perhaps more intrusive, included placing garlic or onion inside a woman's genitals overnight, gauging readiness for childbirth based on morning breath. In the shadows of ancient history, the life and death of the young pharaoh Tutankhamun, or King Tut, remains shrouded in mystery. While details about his reign are sparse, a peculiar discovery during scans of his mummified remains has fueled speculation among historians. The scans revealed an unusual absence. King Tut was embalmed without his heart or chest wall. This departure from traditional Egyptian burial practices has led some experts to theorize that the boy pharaoh met a tragic end possibly due to a severe injury sustained before his demise. Among the various hypotheses proposed by Egyptologists, an unexpected culprit emerges, the hippopotamus. King Tut may have had a penchant for hunting these colossal creatures for sport. Statues in his tomb depict him engaged in the perilous act of hurling a harpoon at a hippo. The theory suggests that during one of these daring hunts, the young pharaoh might have encountered a fatal mishap, perhaps a bite from the mighty jaws of a hippopotamus. The evidence points to the Egyptians' pension for hunting hippos, adding a layer of credibility to this intriguing narrative. Imagine King Tut, adorned with the regalia of a pharaoh, venturing into the marshes in pursuit of such formidable prey. If the theory holds, his death could be a tragic consequence of an adventurous spirit and a risky pursuit of wildlife. In the end, the story of King Tutankhamun takes an unexpected turn, revealing the potential dangers hidden within the pursuits of a young ruler fascinated by the thrill of the hunt. In the intriguing corridors of ancient Egyptian history where justice was meted out in a manner quite distinct from our modern understanding, the Witness Battering Program stands out as a testament to the unique ways crime and punishment were intertwined. Contrary to the popular saying, snitches get stitches, in ancient Egypt, both snitching and stitching took on a different meaning altogether. The roots of this unusual system can be traced back to a plot against Pharaoh Ramesses III. Following the successful conspiracy, the court, in a draconian move, held all individuals in the Pharaoh's palace and court accountable for not preventing the plot. Regardless of their awareness of the conspiracy, they were sentenced to have their ears chopped off, a punishment deemed fitting for their alleged negligence. This harsh precedent sent shockwaves through the populace, creating an environment where people were compelled to report any criminal activity they stumbled upon. The ancient Egyptian guards, far from playing the role of good cop, relentlessly pursued information. Investigations involving tying subjects to stakes and subjecting them to physical torment until the guards were satisfied with the answers. Even suspects' friends and relatives were not spared, enduring brutal interrogations that could lead to false confessions to escape the torment. Surprisingly, the guards acknowledged the potential for false confessions, prompting thorough crime scene investigations to ensure the right person faced prosecution. The witness battering program, however, wasn't confined to physical torment. It delved into psychological realms as well. Instead of taking oaths, witnesses were asked to vividly describe the punishment they would choose for themselves if found guilty. While the court had predetermined punishments, this approach instills fear and discourages false testimonies. In navigating the intricate web of ancient Egyptian justice, the witness battering program starkly contrasts contemporary legal systems. In the captivating tapestry of ancient Egypt, where mysteries abound, the concept of fixed genders was not a steadfast norm. Contrary to popular belief, Egyptians held a remarkably open view on gender fluidity, weaving a narrative where genders transcended their earthly realm. Egyptian mythology, a rich tapestry of gods and afterlife beliefs, showcased a fascinating embrace of gender transformations. In their divine prowess, many gods seamlessly changed genders, a belief extended to humans in the afterlife. In this realm, women, deemed socially inferior, were envisioned to metamorphose into men transcending societal limitations. 
the Pathian of Egyptian gods, far from adhering to binary gender norms, exhibited multifaceted characteristics. Goddesses, at times, were depicted with beards, challenging conventional expectations. Even Queen Hatshepsut, a mighty pharaoh, boldly adorned herself with a fake beard, challenging societal norms in her pursuit of leadership. Yet Egypt's mysteries delve more profoundly, especially into the burial practices that adorn the departure of the departed. Beyond the nuances of gender, Egyptians held peculiar burial customs. Notably, when a king departed, it wasn't uncommon for his slaves to join him in the afterlife, a dark ritual reflecting the hierarchical structure of ancient Egyptian society. In some instances, even the king's wife accompanied him in death, emphasizing the intertwined destinies of royalty and servitude. However, the secrets of ancient Egypt extend beyond gender fluidity and burial rituals. Enslaved people were not just property, they were pawns in a complex game of power. The burial procession wasn't limited to royal confines when a king passed away. Enslaved people, in servitude, even in death, joined their masters in the afterlife. The dark truth reveals a chilling aspect of the societal structure that permeated every aspect of ancient Egyptian life. The shadows cast by the pyramids extend far beyond architectural marvels. Each secret unraveled brings us closer to a civilization that thrived on mystique, challenging our perceptions of life, death, and the dynamics that define their existence. In exploring these hidden corners, we unearth a narrative that transcends the sands of time, inviting contemplation and reflection on the complexities of an ancient civilization. Thank you for joining us on this journey. For more captivating content, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Stay in the loop for exciting updates and engaging videos. Your support means the world to us. Subscribe now and never miss a moment with us.